Hello, my name is Kim Grant and I'm a partner in the law firm of Wayne Grant PC. I've been practicing law for 17 years and for every one of those 17 years I have represented families who have been victims of medical malpractice or otherwise been catastrophically injured. Today I want to talk to you about brain injuries that are caused by a rise in intracranial pressure. The brain is housed within the cranium, otherwise known as the skull. What causes an increase in intracranial pressure? There are different causes. In infants, a rise in the volume of cerebral spinal fluid surrounding the brain and in which the brain floats can cause a rise in intracranial pressure. This is known as hydrocephalus. Years ago, it was commonly referred to as water on the brain. In adults, a blow to the head can cause bleeding, which can cause an increase in intracranial pressure. Let me tell you a story about a case that my firm handled. Michael was born prematurely and had hydrocephalus. In order to prevent his intracranial pressure from getting too high, his doctors placed a drain known as a shunt. The shunt was designed to prevent the excess fluid from building up and allowing the fluid to drain away. A shunt, just like a hose, can get kinked or clogged and sometimes needs a brief procedure to restore flow. Michael, who is one and a half years old, is not acting like himself. He's lethargic and he's vomiting. His mom knows that these can be signs of a shunt malfunction and so she takes Michael to his doctor. His doctor admits Michael to the hospital. The doctor orders a STAT CT. The CT confirms there is a shunt malfunction and a dangerous buildup of fluid and pressure. Unfortunately, the scan is performed in the evening and none of the doctors treating Michael look at the scan. Michael also experiences a significant drop in his vital signs, but the nurses do not summon the doctors. A shunt revision, a procedure to unkink or unclog the shunt, and a procedure which takes less than an hour is also not ordered or performed. Pressure continues to build in Michael's skull, pressing on his brain. Ten hours later, Michael suffers what is known as a brain herniation and infarct as a result of the uncontrollable buildup of pressure. Michael suffers a brain injury, a preventable injury, that results in quadriplegia, blindness, and other cognitive deficits. We successfully represented Michael and his family in order to address Michael's lifelong needs. If you have any questions about medical malpractice or a brain injury case in particular, please give us a call. I'm Kim Grant and thank you for watching.